succeed and go on to make millions, <laughs> others will fail and leave with nothing. Make him a counter offer, tell him to shove it where the sun doesn't shine. With the occasional visit from some wealthy VIPs, I can't not give you money. I can't not make you an offer. First deal in the day. I didn't want it anyway. The hunt is on to find the next big money-making idea. Dragons are go. <laughs> Tonight. Condoms. Edible condoms. <laughs> no, Deborah. Well, so you've lost a million pounds. Correct. How the other half live, eh? It's weird to hear your parents talking about stuff like that. <laughs> You ever. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, don't repeat it. Cook, you can talk, can't you? I, I have a tendency to waffle. Yeah, don't waffle. No, I won't. <laughs> it won't end well. Hi, I'm Joe. I'm from London, and I think it's an amazing opportunity to be in the den. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Fancy a walk? Give me a shout when you see this. That is fantastic, on site. How can you see that, too? I can't even see it. You can't even see the frame. I can't even see it, Sarah. What are they oh, selling? Oh, what are they selling? Well, there's a, well, that's a different story. <laughs> I think in terms of the product, we are a fun product. We're a fun brand, and hopefully that comes across to the Dragons. But we're creating a serious business here, and it's a really important message we're trying to get across. The whole idea of the brand is to promote meaningful moments with mates. You know, there's nothing wrong with checking in on a mate after the general pressures of normal life. And grab a pack of sweets and go for a walk. What better way to do it? Hi Dragons, I'm Joe, one of the co-founders of Tasty Mates, the newest gourmet gummy sweets bursting with both flavour and personality. I'm here today asking for £60,000 in return for 4% of our company. Each packet of Tasty Mates has a unique flavour, portraying a personality trait often found in a friendship group. So, whether you're one half of the perfect pair or the very funny one in the group, we've got a flavour for you. The idea started when my mate Amy was winding me up. At this point, I dubbed her the salty one in the group, and the idea for Tasty Mates was born. Through sampling campaigns, social media, our brand and brand messaging, we aim to promote meaningful moments with mates, because there is nothing more important than being there and checking in on your friends. Initially, we launched two years ago with WH Smith, and since then, we've gone on to scale production and launched with the likes of Holland & Barrett Online, Virgin Atlantic, and Ocado. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be launching across America, Canada and Australia. So with that being said, I'd love to take any questions you have and also hand out some samples for you to try. Bring on the samples. We'll bring them on. Gummy sweets, which encourage friendship, is the offering from Joe Wolf. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. He's asking for £60,000 in return for 4% of the company. There's also a nice little bespoke one we put in there for, oh. you, for you each individually, oh. so... Joe might be trying to sweeten the deal with some personalised packaging, but will Peter Jones be so easily persuaded? Joe. Hi. What's the one that you've put in? You said there's one in here for each of us. So the top one in there, we've done a little bit of a bespoke just to show you a little bit of what we can do. Oh, I've got the stripy you've socks. the stripy the socks. See, I knew what you were going to wear. <laughs> Look at that. That's unbelievable. You've got extremely good taste, you know that. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> How many, what's the number of skews in there? So you've got three at the moment. Have so, you... so we've got, well, we've got four flavours uh, in four. two different sizes. Right, so you've got pear crumble. Pear crumble. And what's crumble? What's that? What, well, so, who's so, your mate that's crumble? So the pear, pear one is the perfect pear. And salted caramel, why is your friend salty? Ah, uh, she was... <laughs> This is an old friend of mine, we were at school together, and this is where the idea really evolved from. We were, I think I was, I was driving somewhere and I was just, I got ping, ping, ping on my phone. And I was like, leave me alone for five minutes, you're winding me up. But we've all got a salty friend in the I've group. I've got a salty friend. You've got so <laughs> It's the one you don't want to get on the wrong side of, with a bit of sass. Yeah, it is the one that you don't want to get on the wrong side of, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure if I get it. Okay. It's a sweet, it's a gummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I understand. And, and it's branded amongst all his friends. <laughs> yeah, but um, so I don't know if that's that's enough of a position sure. to cut through the market. I mean, s slightly, you know, banterish names that I kind of get on, on a sweet product yeah. isn't enough to take on a saturated market. So what am I missing here? I, I think the, the main thing is our, our purpose. 
our meaningful moments with mates. That is, that's intertwined throughout everything we do. And the whole idea is to grab a pack of sweets, go to your mate after a long day of work, and just share a pack of sweets. And I think the message we do, whether that's through social media posts, is to just remind people to check in on a mate because there's no one in this space, no one in the food industry that is doing that. I need to ask a question. Sure. Are mates condoms still in existence? What are they, Deborah? Mates condoms. Edible condoms. Edible condoms? Were they? Yeah, they did edible condoms. Deborah, condoms. Deborah yeah. there was a brand called Mates, <laughs> that, but you weren't sure. supposed to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> That'll explain it. Yeah, really, yeah. Okay, indigestion, maybe <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> it's weird to hear your parents talking about stuff like that. Excuse me. <laughs> Shoot ever. What do you say? Uh, don't repeat it. Joe, what's your sales numbers to date? So, so far this year, in the first five months, we've done £115,000 in revenue. Last year, we did 65000 in revenue. The whole and, year? You did uh, in, in the year, and the year before, 55000 And one of the reasons... And, uh, hang on, I haven't asked this Sorry, I, I have a tendency to waffle. <laughs> yeah, don't waffle. Oh, right. <laughs> it won't end well. Um, how much money have you invested in the business? So, personally, um, myself and my business partner, Nick, put in uh, around 25,000 each. Yeah. And we've done two rounds of investment uh, to date. OK. And how much is that in total? Um, 475,000. Wow, well done. Oof. And how much equity have you given away for that 475? Um, between me and my business partner, we still own 56% of the company. Wow, that's very good. <laughs> Sorry. Joe, Tuka. Um... God, you can talk, can't you? Oh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. <laughs> My teachers at school weren't happy with me for that. You know, I'm looking at you and I'm saying, here you are, you've raised £475,000 on a whim at the moment, because you've only done 100 grand turnover. Um, in the last, well, we've done 115 this first five months of this year. Right, so what do you hope to turn over for the whole year? Uh, this calendar year, yep. we're expecting a £500,000 turnover. So you're going to make four times more in the next seven months? We've just... We're about to launch uh, next next week or next... Who with? Next couple of weeks. Um, across America, Canada and Australia with TJ Maxx, HomeSense, Winners, Marshalls... So you you're about you're about to... I mean, how much orders have you got in your hand physically that signed orders at the moment? Um, in terms of what we sold, 115,000 plus the uh, home sense, which is the initial order of 30,000. Right. So, so you can only go by what you've sold. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I, I'm, I'm in retail. You can have the best product in the world. If it doesn't go off the shelves, you won't get a repeat. Yeah. So, th so that's point one. Point two, out of the 475, how much have you got left? Um, so in terms of cash in the bank, yeah. uh, around 60,000. So where's the 400-odd grand gone? So we've got, in terms of stock, we've got around £75,000 of at cost. At cost price. Right. So how much have you lost since you started? Since we started, uh, 320000 You've lost? Lost. Right. That's, that, that, that's better. Now we know that you're now a loss-making business. Yeah. And then I'm saying to myself, you must have had too many gummies I... when you got to the valuation. So you're valuing this business at one and a half million? You sure some of those haven't got CBD in them? <laughs> right, look, that's a potential future range, but in terms of the valuation that we've offered, we did a raise uh, 18 months ago at the exact same valuation, and since then we've increased... Let me tell you, just because you found some people who are not in the know to invest, it doesn't mean that we're not in the know. All I wanted to say really yeah. was, when it comes to the business, yeah. it doesn't stack up. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you. So, here's the thing. I think Tuchel was really, really harsh with you based on the progress you have made. Um, I, I think you're really impressive um, as an individual, as a guy. I think there's, there's a critical mistake that's been made here is that you've invested a lot in this brand and I actually, from the bottom of my heart, don't believe it's strong enough. The, the branding from a visual element doesn't punch yeah. as hard as I thought you, you would, you know, 26 year old with good sense of humor. This doesn't translate into that. This looks like every sweet packet I've ever seen. And I don't go into investments thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of a new brand and change sure, the whole yeah, thing. I can't. No, of course. I don't actually think it's fair on you either. Yeah. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you, I wish you the very best. So, I was really listening with interest when you were talking about branding. 
I mean, Stephen nailed it at the beginning. It's not compelling enough. And until you've worked out a compelling story, I don't think you are going to sort the brand out. Uh, yeah, and, and I think for me the biggest thing is, is the shape of the, the pack and how that stands out on no, the but show. But it isn't just the shape of the pack, that's exactly my point. Right. It's everything. What are we? What am I? So, so and, and, unless you get to that, unless you know what you are, unless you get your voice, you will spend another half a million pounds messing around because the message that you are trying to get across is not compelling enough. Sure. No, I, I appreciate you know, that. So I'm, I'm really sorry. I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you. Where, where I'm sitting, yeah. OK, I didn't get it at all. Mm. And I still don't, even though you've tried to explain yeah. it a few times. I just feel like it's... You've spent nearly half a million on, on trying to establish a brand over three years, and it just hasn't lit up. And for that reason, I'm going to say I'm out. Thanks, sir. Look, it's... Um, you've handled it really, really well. Thank you. You've, it's not an easy situation, um, but you've handled some of the feedback, and you've had Grumpy Dragon. What Grumpy Dragon? You've had... Straight dragon. You've got honest dragon now. So I th I I I think you have something. Thank you. Um, um and it's and it's all down to you. I think you have got the quality to become quite a successful entrepreneur. Thank you. But the the thing is I have a real issue with this brand. Um I'm sitting here and it's it's weirdly got me from, oh, I can't see how you're going to compete. I can see all the reasons why you're not. And yet I'm still thinking about it and I'm seeing the funny side of this as well. So, um, and then I'm sitting here writing down, actually, could, you could have good mates and they're your sugar free. Yeah. You could have bad mates and they're your loads of sugar in them. Totally. Yeah, there's a whole thing here could be based around the mates or the gummy mates yeah. brand. Um, but because I came up with that idea and you didn't, Yeah. Um, I want a large slice of this business. OK. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, 60,000. But I want 20% of the business. And you'll get, you know, the honest dragon on your side. Is there, is there any movement, sort of 15%, potentially? I'm going to stick fast on my 60,000 for 20%. Okay. But if I get my money back in the next 12 months, I'll drop to 15. I think that that sounds fair. I'd love to accept your offer. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Are you all right? Success for Joe. That was good. Well Thank done, you Joe. Very much everybody. Well done, Cheers. Joe. See you soon. Thanks who shakes hands on a deal and walks away with the £60,000 he came for, along with a new friend. That was intense. That was intense, but amazing. What an experience. How many people can say they've been in the den? Anyway, <laughs> I'm naming one after you straight away, grumpy mate. With his face on it, you won't sell any. Not grumpy, I'm Mr Realist. Hi, I'm Charlie. <sighs> OK, I've got this. I'm from South East London. We always say that a bit proud. Power pose. And I've created a new form of activism. So the thing on the side of the box says every product is created with the plastic waste of South East London community. So what is this? Is this sort of upcycling then? Recycling. Anyone here like really big on like green and eco credit? <laughs> Anyone? No, 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 no. Coming for you, Deborah. So I'm going in to get Deborah. I feel like she'd be a good laugh with a glass of wine. And yeah, I just feel like okay. all of her knowledge and all her connections I'd really benefit from. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for today. And not to look like a total idiot. Hi. <laughs> My heart is pounding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so. Hi, Dragons. I'm Charlie, and I'm the founder of Mall. 
And today I'm asking for £30,000 in exchange for 12% of the business. So at Mull, we're all about rubbish. In fact, Mull means rubbish in German, and this brand name is a hats off to a specific spot in Switzerland where my sustainable journey began after minor mental breakdown and a total life reset. So now I spend my days uh, recycling the single use plastic waste of my community. And with it, I create colorful, stunning, long lasting and purposeful products. We receive plastic waste from drop off bins scattered about our pocket of South East London, all of which we recycle with our transformative recycling scheme. Our whole mission is to get people to stop discarding plastics and view it as a material. But like we're going to be looked at as that weird generation, if we survive, as that weird generation that threw away a valuable material. Like they're going to think we're bonkers. Uh, since launching in October last year, we have so far sold 1,692 units with a revenue of just above 21,000. So today I'm asking you to come on this journey with me because we need funding so that we can buy bigger machines so that we can more effectively recycle and scale this across the UK. So thank you for listening. I'm going to try and bring you some uh, of our products. Probably a bit like this on the tray. An environmentally aware pitch from eco-warrior Charlie Rudkin Wilson. So yours is the green. Thank you very much. And you've stopped shaking. Heart I have not, a little bit. Heart not pounding so much now. You know what? I've calmed down. It's a bit daunting walking out there. She's asking for £30,000 in return for 12% of her company, which turns plastic waste into products with taste. All of that is made out of rubbish. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, that's Lurpak and nice. Philadelphia tubs. This is a Philadelphia tub? It was, yeah. Peter Jones is keen to investigate the origins of the idea. Charlie. Yeah. So, talk to me about the, your eureka moment. You sort of teed it up, you had a bit of a mental breakdown and... Yeah, that was when my life, I did like a life reset. Like I feel, especially it's so easy when you're kind of, you're growing up, right? And you get a job and you think, I'll get out of that job eventually. And then, you know, 10 years or whatever can go by and you're still not doing the thing that you care about. So yeah, then about, I guess I was 27, 28, and then had the breakdown. Um, yeah, and then just realised it was just time for a reset. And do you actually make the actual product? Yeah, I love it. Put a podcast on. It's two great podcasts just here that I listen to. Um, yeah. And your products, how do you make the different types of products you're going to launch? So we have a shredder. So we shred the plastic into little bits before we melt them. And then we have an injection machine. Okay. So you melt the plastic and then you basically inject it into these moulds. So you've got the machines. Yeah. You then create products which you've just shared with us. Yeah. You know, is that a comb? Yeah, what else could it be? <laughs> no, it's just it's quite big, isn't it? He doesn't comb his own hair. Oh, no, it's that's good for curls. curls. No, it's that's brilliant. brilliant. It's good for curls. It's really good. <laughs> Called a white tooth comb, Peter. Okay. Very useful. And what's the size? Where, where could this go to make this a decent sized business? Because the turnover so far hasn't been that big, has it? No, it's so new. But it's is, that, so is new. that because of the volume? No. Uh, so how do you get to a point where could you, for example, make 50 more times the level of products? So we've got enough machines to hit our revenue next year, which is, we predict, 189,000. Charlie, you won't be surprised to hear that I'm, everything you're saying I'm loving. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and I don't know if you yeah. listen to my podcast yes. on recycling, but I had the best day ever yeah. watching one of the huge recycling centres pull out their plastic and what they do with it. So, you know, I, I had no idea you'd get so excited about rubbish. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it... it, it uh, but handled properly, it's a fantastic resource. So, um... Obviously, the qu you're dealing with, well, how much you can make, but yeah. what is your supply of plastic like? 
So at the moment, we almost get a bit too much to what we can cope with. So we have, this is our, one of our bins actually. This is outside our shop, but we have different spots. So there's a well-known London pizza brand and they have like a drop-off point in their spots. We also have schools. There's no fear of not having enough plastic, basically. Well, you say that, but next year you're going to do 190,000. Yeah. But you're going to have to get 10 times as much plastic as you've got at the moment. So. Yeah. And is that feasible? Yeah. It is. If you think so, the average household uses 66 pieces of plastic a week. No, I know, because I've been to the big recycling yeah, yeah, centre. Know. I Trust me, I know how much plastic goes in. I know how much yeah. they deal with in a day. And actually, how good they are at pulling them out and reusing it. My question is, how quickly can you step up your ability to capture more plastic? For me, that's probably one of my, my smallest concerns. Tell me why, then, so, so I, then I'm not yeah, worried. Yeah, yeah, so the drop-off points, they build such a community, and it's what gets people involved, and you build off other businesses' communities to get the plastic in. Charlie, my question is about, the, like, the competitive landscape. What is your point of difference? Like, what is the thing that makes this brand defensible from a, like, an artistic or a creative or a mission or a story point of view? Yeah, I'd say there's a couple of things that are different. I mean, obviously, the design, it's stunning. No one else is doing the rings like this and the soap dish design. So I've got one of these. Is it yours? It's not plastic, though. Is it bamboo-y or is it...? I haven't seen a bamboo zigzag. Well, I've definitely got, I've got a zigzag. Oh. And it's exactly the same. Really? Oh, so someone else was along the same... Feeling. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, in my mind, obviously, you did. I can't believe you didn't find ours. Uh, it's designed so that the soap drains and lasts longer, but it's also beautiful. OK, cool. Um, I have to agree, I think this stuff is really beautiful. Thank you. And the most important thing from my sort of consumer mindset yeah. is I would buy this irrespective of whether it was recycled plastic or not in terms of its aesthetic and its, yeah. um, its allure. And I think that's key because that opens you up to a whole other group of consumers that are buying for star reasons as well as the ethical reasons. So, Charlie, your, yeah. your answer to Stephen yes. um, about your uniqueness... Yeah. There's a lot of people doing recycled plastic product. Yes. That's, so, so that's not, you know... In case anybody thinks recycled plastic product is in any way unique yeah. or different... Yeah. I mean, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. there's a whole industries. I think your difference is that you um, are engaged with your local community who, instead of bunging their rubbish into a bin, it goes away somewhere and they never have to think about it again. It makes them understand the part that they are playing direct into plastic waste yeah. and makes them feel like they are making a difference and that is really important yeah. because otherwise everybody can feel like it's, what can I do? My concern is that having boiled down the uniqueness, it is about your community. And, um, and as the recycling industry gets more and more sophisticated, and I was actually pretty blown away. I had no idea how good they were at, at chucking in a load of really mixed rubbish. And then at the end of it, ending up with this massive block of plastic. You know, just, just... And selling that plastic, because you're right. It's a commodity. People yeah. want it. So, it's a, you know, you're, you're so right on every front. And I love that. I think you, you, you want to make an impact in the community. And I think that's where it's going to live. I can't get to... No, I, I'm going to sit here. I don't Ooh. think I can get to. I want to, Charlie, I want to. I'm sitting yeah. here thinking, you know, everything. There's nothing, yeah. everything you're doing, I absolutely love it. But in here, we are looking at investments and return on investments. So, I, I, yeah, let me think. I, I do, I do absolutely love what you're doing. And I think that making that point about the fact that this is a community business, based business, I think is so true. The issue that I have with this, and it's similar to, to Deborah's sort of comment, the mechanism of getting access to recyclable plastics from the big, the big boys is actually very easy. So the winner there is ultimately an established brand, and that's why I think you sit really neatly in that community. That I can't see how I can make money on it, so sadly for that reason I'm out. OK, thank you. Charlie. Yes, hi. <laughs> Listen to everybody talk. 
I, I do agree with what everyone says, that this is a community business. But you're here and I'm there in terms of my community is up in the northeast of England. Yeah. And your community that you're passionate about is in central London. To me, then, it just doesn't feel that I'm right for you, primarily because of the geography piece. Yeah. So I'm going to say I'm out. All right, thank you so much. I love your energy. Thank you. I think, I think it has a bit of fresh air to the den. Yeah. And when I look at this, this is your journey. This is your passion. But for me, um, I can't see where I fit into all this. So I'm out. I, um, for me to invest in a business, you know, I think you're fantastic. I really like, I like the products, but you know, when I, when I consider this as an investment proposition, I have to get to a point of high conviction on the market, the opportunity, the levers in the business that we can pull to grow the business. I just sometimes, but just by sitting next to Deborah, you know, Deborah loves, she, no, nobody I've ever met loves to talk rubbish more than Deborah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That. Yeah. laughs> and sometimes sitting in contrast, I realise the deficit in my knowledge here, and therefore I wouldn't be able to get to the conviction I need. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Yeah. But I wish you the very best, and I think you're awesome. Oh, thank you. Thanks. So, Deborah. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, Charlie, listen, um, what makes it hard is that I love so much. And I think you're smart. Thank you. Um, what I have a worry for is that in the time that you're trying to build this model, the industry is going to zoom past you because it is becoming a really big issue and I think people are beginning to see plastic as a real commodity. I mean, they get proper money for these bales of plastic. So that commercialism hasn't got the conscience you've got, but it is what is going to change the world because money changes the world, sadly. Um, so unfortunately, you can hear from my language. No, Deborah. <laughs> Come on, Deborah. Stop. I don't need you doing it as well, Stephen, for goodness sake. The thing sake. is, with you... <laughs> I'm binding this hard enough. With you, we can do it, and with your advice... I think with you, you could do it, Charlie. Yeah. Thank you. But I feel like with you, I could do it ten Yeah, but I think, I, yeah, we could do this all day. Oh. Well, you know... Shut what? your eyes. I'm going to shut my eyes. Shut your eyes. <laughs> shut my eyes. No, my eyes are open. Like, just thank you so much for the time. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Charlie. Like, thank you, Charlie, everyone. Charlie, thanks for coming in. All right. All thanks right. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Bye-bye. Despite impressing sustainability expert Deborah Meaden, Charlie leaves the den without an investment. I think it was just pretty cruel that Deborah couldn't have seen the light and invested in her. <laughs> just what you need, Deborah. Yes. You've had to go it's through that already. That. Just what you need. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did it. I was kind of counting on Deborah to invest. Some of her points are correct. At the moment, we are just in this small community. But hey, this mission doesn't stop in South East London. So I guess. She'll come back around, it's just she won't get such a good deal for her shares next time. <laughs> Your water? Yeah, please. I'm Shabir. I'm Dinesh. We've created a way to disrupt the food and takeaway industry. Do you think this is authentic home-cooked food delivered to your door? I think it is. I think it might yeah. be. Well, there's only four chairs. We could have just got up and moved over there and had our dinner. We need to cancel the Ivy. Mm -hmm. The Dragons might be keen to avoid a pricey restaurant bill, but these entrepreneurs are hoping they'll still end up with lighter pockets. Going into the den, we're both prepared. We know our numbers, we've got a great business, and we're going to walk away with a bag of cash. Hello, Dragon. Hello, Dragons. This is Dinesh. And I'm Shabir. We're the co-founders of Cook My Grub. We're looking for 150K for 7% of the business. Remember that paella you had on your last Spanish holiday? Or maybe that lasagna at your friend's home? Now, what if I told you that you could enjoy all of that 
in the comfort of your home, and it was authentically home cooked by a person from that region. We're a home cooked food delivery app that allows customers to discover, order, and pay for delicious home cooked meals, all of it freshly cooked by home chefs and delivered to your door. We've delivered over 50,000 meals to date, and our customer base of over 5,000 love the authenticity of the cuisines and the sincerity and love with which the food is made. At the same time, for home chefs like Alison, we have created a digital hub through which we provide them all the support they required to start their food businesses from home. We have uh, more than 50 chefs actively trading with us, and we deliver their food nationally through our partnership with THL and Royal Mail. With your support and investment, we believe there is a rare opportunity to create a new segment in the food industry while creating an opportunity for people who make great food. Thank you very much. We look forward to your question. From kimchi to korma, ready meals made by home chefs are the offering from Shabir Muktiar and Dinesh Patil. Today we have Chef Alison who is serving the delicious Caribbean uh, jerk chicken and rice and Trini double puri uh, for Deborah. The pair are seeking £150,000. My mother used to cook this all the oh, time. Fantastic. I'm going to go for this one. In return for 7% of their food delivery business. It's very nice. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Much, yeah. The food is so nice. Thank you, thank you, so, you so much. much. Enjoy. Thank you. It's a big thumbs up on taste for Chef Allison. But has Shabir and Dinesh's pitch given the dragons an appetite to invest? Tuka Suleiman is first up with the questions. So, Dinesh and Shabir, I, I live in London. Yep. Um, if I wanted to order something from you, yep. and I wanted to eat it at seven o'clock, so what time would I have to order it from you? So when you open the app, you'll see a schedule of delivery days. So for example, if you went on the app today and you placed an order just now, the food would get cooked tomorrow. Right, so I've got to decide 24 hours in advance what I want to eat. Yes. And normally I decide an hour before. I'm going to save you something. It's a ready meal. So you, you put it in the microwave. Uh, it's a three minute ready meal, so it's all come prepared. All right, we are basically... I thought it was going to come prepared with a chef and the whole thing, cooked up my dinner. <laughs> Okay. If we all don't right. have Just private like chefs. going to the supermarket yeah. and looking on all the shelves and going, I'll have that ready meal, but you're looking online yeah. and then they make it. Perhaps I'm spoiled. Yes. Perhaps I'm spoiled. I don't go to supermarkets. I don't buy ready meals. How the other half live, eh? <laughs> um, so, how long have you been going? Uh, so we started, uh, we started trialling the concept towards the end of 2020. Yep. Really started exactly two years ago in May 2021. Right. So you've had two years of trading. Correct. So give us two years of numbers. Uh, so the last year we did 162k revenue. Yeah. Net profit or loss? Uh, 299k. 290k. You lost. Yes. Yeah. So this is the last year. The year before we did 251k. 251 during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. And, and net loss? Uh, 699. Wow. So you've lost a million pounds. Close. To million. Where's the million pounds come from? We raised through the Angel Network, through our Angel personal network. and professional so, network. OPM? Yes. Other people's money? And our own money as well. How much have you guys put in? Uh, we initially started with 15K each. Right. So, <clears throat> your next 12 months, sure. what will the turnover be? 4.4 million. What, have you struck gold somewhere or what? <laughs> no. You're going from uh, 162 so, to 4.4? Yes. Correct. Sorry. Guys, so... You did the 162 last year, so you're doing an average about 3K a week in revenue. Is that about right? Close to, yeah. So to go from 3,000 a week to 80,000 a week, because that's what you're saying you're going to do this year with the 4 million. So how we, what, fill that gap in for me. What's, what's happening between 3K now and 80K a week? So we've got over 5,000 customers at the moment. Every customer averaged five to six times with us so far. So to hit those numbers, we need 120,000 orders. So that means we are expecting if we acquire 30,000 customers, that will help us to generate that uh, level of revenues. OK. So how are you going to do that? So we've, we've got a three-pronged strategy. The first one is we've started working with a lot of the affiliate websites. So those websites will basically market us in order to get a cost per acquisition and, and make their own money. 
Uh, we've managed to get some fairly influential chefs on our platform, so people who've got good social media following, so they're going to amplify the message. And then finally, we're working with influencers, doing sponsorships and focusing a lot on product-based growth. Hi, Hi. I'm Sarah. Um, food is fantastic. Thank you. Right. And I've worked my way through my box and I've sampled almost everything in the box. I just wanted to understand a little bit more about the ownership structure in the business. Sure. So is it the two of you guys that are the major shareholders? Yeah. And how much equity did you give away for your first rounds of funding? So, so what's that structure looking like at the moment? Sure. So we've given away about 31% in equity so far, uh, but we remain the majority stakeholders. And are there any other significant um, personnel in the business beyond you two? Um, they are mainly angel yes. investors, some of them maybe on the higher net worth side. Could you mention some of the higher net worth? Sorry, Sarah, but it'd be good to Thank know who, who are these? Um, yeah, so uh, my, my background is into telecoms before, uh, and one of my ex-boss actually has basically backed me up with his investment. Your boss thinks you're good. That's good. Your boss back you? I think, yeah, I mean, we were really fortunate because uh, we had, uh, you know, sort of large corporate careers and both of us had a large professional network. So a lot of people who pulled in the funds were people who had actually worked with us in the past and so far they're not complaining. Oh, that says a lot about you. Yeah. Shabir, Dinesh, customer acquisition. That's really the, one of the central parts of you achieving the goals that you've stated today. Can you just give me what you're planning to do to acquire customers for this business? So really the plan for us is to have more offers on the affiliate sites and do not just credit vouchers like we do just now, but to actually do full meals. So Valentine's Day specials, any of the events coming up, do very specific special meals where it's a set price, which we've agreed with the chef, we can have our margins built in. And online, uh, uh, social media, have you got a plan there? Have you got anybody in your team with a competence in social media? Social media is something which uh, we're, we're trying to get good at. We don't have a very, we don't have a leader in social media. Um, I really hope that you guys are successful because I think you're really wonderful people and I think your product is fantastic. When I look at the business and I think about the journey forward and having spent some time with the founder of Delivery, I have quite a clear understanding of the capital requirements and you're gonna to have to raise tens of millions in capital to compete and to really scale. Obviously, if you get early good metrics, then that'll be justified, but getting those early metrics, it will, requires a great customer acquisition strategy and I don't see that here. Um, I think it's missing from the core team and I'm not looking for a job, I'm looking for an investment that I can help. Yeah. Um, so on that basis, I'm gonna say that I'm out. Guys, um, you're honest, I can see you're hardworking, I can see why people are back to you. But it does not um, change anything with the fact that I think you know, you're gonna go from 162,000 turnover to four million. It's not convincing, for me anyway. So for that reason, I'm out. Listen, you guys, you're great. Um, but this is a conversation. It's one of those, this is me and it's not you conversations. I'm not excited by this business. I'm not excited by it. Um, that's all I can tell you for no particular reason other than it hasn't got me. Um, so I won't be investing, I'm out. Thank you. Guys. So when we get investment opportunities come in front of us at the dead, I put them into little buckets in my head and I've got you in that high risk but high reward bucket. Um, from my point of view, I would want to be incentivized within your business. But you've already had quite a significant amount of money in. There's probably going to be several future rounds of investment and I'm going to be looking to get diluted. So it's for that reason and that reason alone that I'm going to say that I'm out. Guys, um, look, I, I personally think that there is a really positive journey you're about to go on. I think you've got a really good opportunity here with this business. You've definitely got a seed of a business. I like the fact that you are building a community of chefs and there are a lot of great chefs out there that are probably just sitting waiting to be contacted because they'd love to have this job. But you're definitely going to need more money if you want to have a chance in this marketplace. 
you're almost like the foundations of a house. But the foundations are not even complete yet. And that's the only reason why I'm going to say that I'm out. But I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Well done, guys. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Well thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. No deal for Shabir and Dinesh. Who depart the den without delivering a dragon or their cash. Disappointed not to get the investment, but we got some great feedback. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed, but yeah, I think we're pretty confident that uh, one day they will say, oh, I missed this opportunity of making my money. Do a quick glass of water, anyone? Yeah. My name's Dave, I'm from London, and I'm 41 years old. Our product solves a problem which I had for years, being uncomfortable. We basically made a real product for real people. Why are none of them smiling? Sure. They're dragons, it's intimidating. They've got to be something to do with water. Microfiber. Swimming trunks. It's a beach brand. Yeah. Special type of material when it gets wet. Walk and look cool. You look cool, so you've got that part nailed. If I was to get investment from a dragon today, I would love Tuka because of his experience in fashion, his manufacturing knowledge, contacts would be just invaluable to us. Does it make you feel like you're on a holiday now? Is that what your holidays look like? Yeah, deck chair on the beach. I mean, to be fair, I get other people to set it up for me now, but before I used to just carry all the kit down. Oh. Oh. <coughs> Beautifully modelled. Well done. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name's Dave, and our company is Randy Cow. We're an award-winning sustainable beachwear brand with a cheeky vibe and a goal to do good. So, a brief history of us. Uh, having played rugby all my life, I suffered with a common condition known as rugby chunkyitis, which meant I had big bum and big legs, and I always struggled to find swim shorts that were comfortable and didn't often split. So I spent a couple of years walking around the globe, learning on my feet, and we launched our company in December 2019 with our first product, our waterproof pocket swim shorts. The waterproof pocket was developed with another company. They hold the patent outright, and we know that other people were going to be able to use this, but we would have been at the forefront to bringing this product to market. The pocket itself will hold and keep its uh, content safe. I'll just show you a little demonstration. So using my phone, I'll start a timer just to show that it's working. The pocket itself is hidden and it uses flexible magnets to create a hermetic seal. So I just submerge this and we can come back to that later. So we've got a few samples for you. Our helpers will give them out for you. How much did you want and what percent? We were asking for £80,000 in return for 20%. Waterproof pocket swim shorts are the big ticket item in Surrey based Dave Weller's portfolio of beachwear products. Thank you. What's your name? Ted. Ted. Hi, Ted. Peter. Great to meet you. Dave's offering to hand over 20% of his business. So let's say thank you to Adam and Ted for your help. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks. In return for an £80,000 investment from the Dragons. So I'll just show the phone the other side of being in the water for a moment. So the timer's still running, the phone's still intact. The always fashionably fitted out Stephen Bartlett is first to find out if the shorts idea has legs. Dave, well done. Thank you. I really want to get a real clarity on what the unique selling point of this product is, because there's a few products here, and the one that I got has the waterproof pocket. Yes. Um, is that the key selling point about well, this? Well, that's what we started with. So originally, that was our whole USP. But like I say, because the patent is owned by another company and they do now sell this, there are other people that can do this. So it's not mm -hmm. completely unique. The only unique thing really is the brand. And what does the brand stand for? What are the values of the brand? 
So the big ethos of the brand really is obviously you've got an eco-friendly sort of agenda. So all of the shorts are made from recycled plastics. But the whole thing is I want the brand to be a good thing. Like people look at it and understand that we're cheeky, but we have, we have a goal to just be good, basically. Dave, I've got to ask, what's behind Randy Cow? So when I first had this idea, I wanted a business name that was quite tongue in cheek. And I was on a train and I saw some cows in the field that were amorous. And it was just a name that I said and thought that could be quite a good name for a brand. And I went away, worked on the logo to sort of be a bit more commercial. That's what I was going to ask the next thing is the, I don't understand the logo. I can't work the logo out. So the, the, the actual brand is just a winking cow. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's a cow winking. Yeah, so it's very so it's supposed to be like the black eye patch. So it's playing on like a, an emoji that you have like on your phone. That's where it was taken from. So give me an idea of performance then since yep. 2019 in terms of sales. Sure. So the first year was only a nine month year, but we turned over £22,300. In year two, we turned over £43,000. And then in year three, we saw turnovers of £47,000. And to date this year, we've turned over £40,000, which is about 85% of last year's turnover already, even though it's been winter months. So, I mean, so far over the last four years, it's been pretty flat. And I understand yeah. that there's been a lot, a lot went on in the world. Absolutely, yeah. The holiday market, but it hasn't really taken off in any, in no. any way. So all of our growth as well has been organic. We haven't done it. We, we tried one stint at digital marketing back in 2020 and it didn't work out. We spent a fortune and we got very little sales. On some of our adverts we were putting out there, we did seem to get a lot of people commenting saying that they thought our product was expensive. What is the price for, for so, the shorts that I've got? Yeah, sure. So the waterproof pocket swim shorts retail for £89. The normal swim shorts retail for £69. Our kids shorts retail for £24. So where are you making these at the moment? So at the moment, those are made in China. And they do a great job, but... Yeah, they're, they're, oh, they're, they're very well made. I'm just trying to work out why they're so expensive. I can understand why the waterproof pocket ones yeah. are, but like these kids shorts, you said they're like 24 pounds. They're like double the price yes. of regular kids shorts. Yeah. So, I mean, they cost us um, 11 to 12 pounds to make. It's expensive. Yeah, so they're, they're a bit of a loss leader at the moment because we are ordering minimum order quantities. If we made a bigger order, we'd reduce the cost per unit, so but we'd reduce our, at the think? moment shipping costs are Don't you answer, because I'm coming to you next. Yeah. But what do you think you will get these down to? To be fair... Tell you what, let's go with instead of the kids' ones, let's take the adult ones. Yeah. Got, so, the, so the adult ones that you're selling at 69... Yes. And they cost you what? They cost us £12 to make. And what do you think they should be made for? Um, I think the children's ones, five, six dollars. Yeah. And this one, seven, eight dollars. The price point you are at for regular shorts, mm -hmm. you are building a very aspirational high-end brand. Yes. And it, that, that's not going to be mass market. No. They, they're, they're very expensive swim trap, which is the feedback you've had yeah. when you've tried to do any digital marketing. So if these were regular price shorts, mm -hmm. I think your quirky brand works at a regular yeah. price, but when you kind of double the price, yeah. I think it's going to be difficult to build that brand. So I am out, but I do wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Dave, I'm going to be very honest. Mm -hmm. You're a very nice guy, and there's definitely a gap in the market. That's the positive. Yes. And sometimes I sit here in a very unfair position. Mm -hmm because I know this business, you know, so it's easy for me to criticise. However, nothing coordinates. The prints look like, I mean, they're not colour. You want to go on the beach, you want to wear a colourful print. Mm -hmm. They just look dull and boring. To me, if, if I was coming to the den, mm -hmm. I would have had 30 shorts all printed there. We do, we do have um, quite a few designs. They're not obviously all out no. here. We've got designs for um, sort of floral um, and sort but of... But you didn't natural. bring it here today. No, no, I'm saying we've got the designs, but we haven't manufactured them. Everything yeah. does hinge on the fact of sort of how we can grow with the capital. Because we've they, still funded this to start sorry. with. Yeah, sorry. You've got an opportunity mm -hmm. in this sector because there aren't that many players doing it properly. You know, and all, all you need is a, probably an outside designer mm. to come in fresh 
and put together a coordinated collection mm -hmm. using all your credentials of recycled fabrics. I mean, I can see this being a cool brand mm -hmm. where it all matches. You've got your linen shirt, you've got your shorts. It, it all coordinates, yeah. but it just looks, I'm sorry, it, I would have expected a lot more than this. Sure. Okay. You know, in my world, and I see a lot of products, mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying to pitch to somebody, then you've got to have a coordinated story. Mm -hmm. And in here, I don't see it. Dave. Yes, Dave. I'm going to tell you where I am. Um, I think you've done a, done a good job. Thank you. Getting a business like this off the ground and getting it moving, that's certainly something to be commended. I actually also really like the one, the shorts you've given me. Thank you. And I'm, I am quite fussy about swim shorts, but I think the colour is really, really cool. But I look over at this product and I think, do I see the creativity and the, the storytelling that would convert that awareness that we could potentially give it mm -hmm. into raving, avid fans? And I don't, I don't see it. Yeah. So for that reason, I think the brand has still got a long way to go. Yeah. So, so I'm going to say that I'm out. OK. Sorry. But I wish you the very, very best. Dave, you will probably know that I've got a yes. brand that actually came into the den, turning over half a million I figured million there might be a slight conflict. At the time, mm -hmm. and um, now is a multinational, multi-million pound business. Yes. So, yes, there would be a conflict. Absolutely. I love that you've embedded the whole sustainability piece from the absolute start of your business, and I applaud you on that. But I won't be investing. I'm out. Dave. You're entering something, it's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. there, there are lots of businesses, actually swimwear brands, that end up in the graveyard. And to be able to stand out, you need to really, really think differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that you've really thought differently from that one moment where you said about getting Randy Cow. Mm -hmm. But it's not unique enough. It doesn't really punch above its weight, and it's not going to get the traction. But I'd like to invest in you because there's something that I love about a challenge, especially when everybody else thinks this isn't going to happen. Um, so I'm going to make you an offer. Brilliant. But this offer will come on the basis that, A, I think you're likely to need a fair amount of support and money. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I think it's going to take quite a bit of work. Yes. So that comes at a price. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, 80,000, mm -hmm. but I want 40%. OK. But I would be willing to share this with Tuca. Nobody knows product like Tuca. Yeah. And I can help you strategize. I can help this business go through the roof with you. And Tuca just knows everything. It knows every single buyer in the marketplace, every single product. So I think we would be a perfect combination for you. OK. But I'm still happy to do it on my own. Sure. But I'd also share it with Tuca. Dave, you've got three assets here. Mm hmm You've got yourself, you've got your brand, and you've got an offer. Yes. But you've got nothing else, in my view. However, I have said there's an opportunity in this sector and, and, and you've got a brand that you could push barriers to because of the, of the name. And if you're willing to accept change, if you're willing Absolutely. to start from a blank piece of paper, then I'm willing to go half a piece do you want to go to the wall and well, reflect? I don't, I don't need to go to the wall because I know in my head we did have a ceiling on what we was hoping to accept. So when you've got your money back, would you be willing to drop down to 30 percent? Uh, I, I think that we need to hold, no, hold yeah. fast on that offer because there's a lot of work and it's almost like doing all of that work and then actually losing. Yeah. So I think we need to keep that shareholding. Uh, in which case, we'd like to accept your offer. Great. Great. Well done. Wow. Thank you very well much. Done. Look forward Thank to working much. with you. Dave has done it. Thank you very much. Let's see how we go. Dave, well done. Good luck with the um, rugby chunkyitis as well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Cheers. 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 His beachwear brainwave has bagged a brace of dragons, and his company coffers are £80,000 to the good. When it rolled down to Peter, I must admit, my brain was thinking, I'm leaving here with nobody. And for him to say he was investing was a shock, but an amazing moment.
and Tuka was the one that I had in mind from the beginning. So, very happy. I must say, I'm, I'm slightly worried about going home and saying I've invested in a Randy cow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going in, Ben. Next time on Dragon's Den. Gary, welcome back, mate. How are you feeling? Not sure. You look like a, a rabbit caught in the headlights. <laughs> Good point. I mean, I decided quite a while ago that I, that I wasn't going to make you an offer. Oh, Ooh. here she comes. It needed something a little more bang about it. And you're getting emotional as well, which has just pushed me over the edge. When do I get my money back? In seven years' time. Oh, my God. Seven years' time. Can I finish? Is that OK? <laughs>